I think it was just before pancake day and um, I can remember making some pancakes and thinking this is the last pancake I'll ever eat but of course it wasn't you can you can work all kinds of things into your diet you don't need to sort of you know deprive yourself of all the fun in life the diet plays an important part in the management of diabetes um, if someone needs to lose weight, we know that by losing weight can help to improve your diabetes management. So by making changes to your diet can help you to lose weight. It can also prevent um, long and short term complications associated with diabetes. Um, for instance, long term complications will be heart disease and stroke. I had to become very quickly aware of what carbohydrates were. And I have to confess, prior to being diabetic, I wasn't overly sure what a carbohydrate was. And um, they're the food which actually gets turned into sugars in your body. So for diabetics, that's um, particularly important. So I have to count now all the carbohydrate that I eat. And then I work out how much insulin that I need according to how much carbohydrate I'm eating. Um, people with type 2 diabetes I tend to see in groups, um, especially those who are newly diagnosed. Um, and then the aim is to try to help them to lose weight um, and to um, have a more balanced diet. So a balanced diet is eating a variety um, of foods. Um, we use the Eat Well plate to um, explain what a balanced diet is. The Eat Well Plate was developed by the Food Standards Agency more than 35 years ago. The Eat Well Plate gives you guidance on how many portions you should have of each food group. Um, and um, we also have some guidance on what a, on the, on what a portion is. So if someone um, f follows the guidance, then that can help them to, to lose weight and achieve better blood glucose control. So if we look at the E12 plate, so um, we've put out the E12 plate on the table. So you'll see the first, the first group is your um, fruit and vegetables. Um, and then the next big group is your starchy carbohydrates. Um, the next group is your, is your group that's high in protein and iron. So that's your meat, meat alternatives like chicken, fish, beans and your vegetarian alternatives. The next group is your um, group high in calcium, so that's milk, cheese and yogurt. And then right here in the middle we have the smallest group, which is um, foods high in fat and iron sugar. So that will be things like cakes, biscuits, chocolates, oil, crisps. So if we look at the um, first big group, so your fruit and vegetables, um, most people, when I ask them how many portions of fruit and vegetables we should have, they know it's at least five. And in countries like America and Australia and parts of Europe, they recommend eight portions. So we um, suggest, you know, five to eight. A portion is about a handful. So if you look at an apple that fits in your hand, that's about a portion. Or a banana that fits in your hand, that's a portion. Um, fruit again about a handful, so if you look at grapes, about eight big grapes would be a portion. So a portion of salad is a small bowl, and this is a, a, a portion of roasted vegetables. And a portion of dried fruit is about a tablespoon. You can count fruit juice as part of a portion, but if you try to lose weight, or if your blood glucose control um, aren't so good, then you usually suggest to avoid having fruit juice or smoothies. Um, and you can use tinned fruit and um, frozen fruit and vegetables as well as part of your, of your five portions of fruit and vegetables a day. It doesn't have to be fresh. So, okay. If we move to the next um, big group, so that's your starchy carbohydrates. So that includes all your cereals, pasta, rice, bread, potatoes, and again, a portion is about a handful, so if you take a jacket potato, you know, that would be a portion. Um, a Weetabix is a portion. A slice of bread would be a portion. Um, so it's not a big portion, really. So it's about a portion, yeah? So a handful is about a portion. Yes, yeah, so a handful of rice would be a portion. Now, um, with fruit and vegetables, we usually recommend um, 
if you have fruit, you know, uh, try not to have more than one at a time, but spread them out throughout the day. And that's because fruit has natural sugar in. So the more fruit you have, the higher your blood sugars potentially can go after um, you, you've had your fruit. And that will be the same with starchy carbohydrates. So um, it's important to have carbohydrates because they are our main source of energy. But portion control is quite important because the bigger your portion is, the higher your blood glucose potentially can go after a meal. So um, like fruit and vegetables, we said um, the amount of portions we should have is about five to eight. And it's the same for your starchy carbohydrates. So about five to eight portions. Um, and if you think about your three meals, dividing those five portions into three meals, that will be more or less two for breakfast, two for lunch, and to an evening meal. So if we then move to the next group, so that is your um, meat and meat alternatives, so your, your eggs and your beans and fish and vegetarian alternatives, um, we should have about two to three portions a day. And a portion is about um, the, the size of the palm of your hand um, or the size of um, a deck of playing cards. Um, fish fingers will be about three fish fingers or one egg um, or half a ton of tuna, half a ton of sardines, poachers. Um, or in terms of weight, it is about two to three ounces. So this is about two, this is, um, two ounces of chicken breast. And this is two ounces of ham. Um, beans are excellent um, in that they are very low fat and although they contain carbohydrates um, we digest it so slowly that it doesn't cause a rise in your blood sugars um, after you've had it. Um, baked beans will cause a little bit of a rise because of the tomato sauce but other lentils um, like chickpeas, um, your split peas, they um, have a very low glycemic index which then causes a rise in your blood sugars and therefore are quite good in giving you some energy but good as well in controlling your diabetes. People always ask about eggs and should we limit eggs? Um, there's no need to limit eggs. We used to think that you have to limit your egg intake because egg yolk contains cholesterol that will push your own cholesterol up. But we now know it's saturated fat that pushes your cholesterol up. So we don't limit eggs anymore. You know, it's probably best to boil it or, or poach the egg. So if we look at your milk, cheese and yogurt, um, we should have about two to three portions a day. Now these, um, this group can potentially be quite high in fat, especially if you think about cheese. So again, if you try to lose weight, it's best not to have cheese too often, um, but only about two to three times a week. Um, and if you have milk and yogurt, go for the lower fat um, varieties. So a portion of milk is about 200 mils or a third of a pint. Um, a portion of yogurt is a, a, small, a small bowl. Um, and that's the same for custard, so a portion of custard is about a small bowl. And a portion of uh, cottage cheese is a whole tub of cottage cheese. Um, and for hard cheese, it's the, um, the size of a matchbox, a small matchbox. So um, the last group is your, is your group that's high fat, high sugar and high salt. So it is not, um, it doesn't provide us with any essential nutrients, but we know it's part of a balanced diet and it can be part of a balanced diet, but we should have it in the smallest um, proportions. And we use um, oil to prepare food and, you know, we use spread in our butter. So, so it can be part of a balanced diet, but really it, it should be the smallest part. Um, and we should try not to have more than four portions a day. So a portion would be um, two plain biscuits or a teaspoon of, of spread, or a tablespoon of mayonnaise or salad dressing, um, or a small, a small chocolate bar, or a small bag of crisps. It's about 50 grams of cake as a portion, which is it's a slice of cake. Salt in itself won't affect your blood glucose or your diabetes control, but a high salt intake can potentially increase your blood pressure. Um, so a lot of the salt that we eat is already in food. 
Um, so if you think about bread and breakfast cereals that have salt in it um, and then all processed foods have salt in it. So the guidance on how much salt we should have a day is about six grams. And um, I worked out one day that if you have four slices of bread with a digestive and cheese on it and a bag of crisps, you already had six grams of salt. So it's, not, it's quite easy to, to meet your requirement. Yeah. So what I would like to do now is um, put out three meals um, and I'm going to um, use food from the Eat Well plate um, but I also want to show um, what a, um, a typical portion would be um, for three meals. If we, if we start for breakfast, now um, remember I said that we should have about five to eight portions of starchy carbohydrates a day. If you divide that into three meals, that will be about two for breakfast, two for lunch and two in the evening. So if you have for breakfast, if you for instance have um, porridge, this will be about two portions of porridge. Um, if you then lunchtime have a sandwich, so I'll just have a sandwich. Um, so you two slices of bread, so that's two portions of carbohydrates so and then in the evening if you have a jacket potato this is um, another portion so five portions in total so two from your porridge two from your bread and then one from your jacket potato now I want to add the um, your fruit and vegetables to that we should have to have, we should try to have at least five portions of fruit and vegetables a day so for breakfast um, or mid-morning um, you can have a fruit, lunchtime having some salad, so that's already one, two, three portions. Okay, so and in the evening if you have with your jacket potato, um, salad and some vegetables. And then in the evening you might want something sweet after, so you can have some tinned fruit. So here we have one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight portions of fruit and vegetables. So next I'm going to add um, um, foods from your protein group. So if you think about your um, lunchtime, you can have some ham on your sandwich. And then in the evening, um, with your jacket potato, I have here um, some corn mince, so this is about um, two portions of protein. And then now I'm going to add some food from the group high in calcium. So in the morning you um, can have some milk with your porridge um, or you can even make your porridge with milk and then in the evening you can have some custard with your, with your tinned fruit and then that will meet your two portions of dairy for that day. And then um, I'm just going to add some food from the high fat group. So remember, we should try not to have more than four. So on your bread, you might want to put some spread. So again, a teaspoon um, of spread as a portion. Or you can make it slightly better by adding um, low fat mayonnaise, um, about a tablespoon as a portion. Um, so your whole meal will be a bit lower in calories if you swap your spread with a low fat mayonnaise. So there's a, um, a balanced diet, so three meals a day, meeting all your food groups. So breakfast, lunch and dinner. When you uh, look at food labels, if you um, want to have low sugar product, um, it, it depends on, on, on the product. So for something like breakfast cereals, if you look at the food label, um, look at the per 100 gram side. So you'll see food labels are always divided into um, a portion, a suggest, suggested portion, and then per 100 gram. So if you look at per 100 gram, um, you'll see it says carbohydrate of which sugar. If the sugar is less than a third of the total carbohydrate, then that will be a low sugar product or a low sugar cereal. If you're taking insulin and you're wanting to know how much carbohydrate is in a particular food or 
a portion of food. I mean, I use the labels all the time. Okay, let's have a look and see what we can find. For yogurt, the total carbohydrate should be less than 10 grams per 100 gram. So that is for yogurt, but you can also use that for things like rice puddings and custard. For anything else, the sugar should be less than 5 grams per 100 gram. So um, the glycemic index is a ranking of how quickly your blood glucose rise after you had a certain food. So something with a high glycemic index means your blood sugars rise really quickly after you had that food. Whereas something with a, a low glycemic index means your blood sugars won't, won't rise as quickly. So foods that um, typically has a low glycemic index are your whole grain breads, but also most fruits, um, especially um, especially berry fruits like cherries, raspberries, that have a very low glycemic index. A high glycemic index will be things like um, white bread, mashed potato, fizzy drinks, sweets that have a high glycemic index, fruit juice. So and it is better to have lower glycemic index foods. If you try to manage your diabetes, the lower glycemic index foods are better um, because you won't get that peaks after a meal. For someone who has been diagnosed with diabetes, the aim is to try to achieve as close to normal blood glucose as possible. Um, if you carry too much weight around, then by losing weight um, can help you to improve your diabetes control. So by following um, a balanced diet, by eating more of the foods that um, are lower in calories, for instance, um, and less of the foods that are quite high in calories, that can help, to, um, that can help you to lose weight. One thing I um, would like to add is that um, the, the bigger your portion of carbohydrates, the higher your blood glucose would rise after a meal. So by focusing on your carbohydrate portions can help to um, prevent really high blood glucose readings. And by having a consistent carbohydrate intake can also help. So for instance, if you have breakfast, always try to have more or less the same amount of carbohydrates for breakfast. If you have lunch, have the same amount of carbohydrates for lunch. And if you have tea, have more or less the same amount of carbohydrates for tea. So if you look at this and you notice that your portions are um, uh, maybe bigger, than we suggest, then by cutting down your portions will not just help you to lose weight, but also improve diabetes control.